All right, Rodolfo Roman, the Roman Show here with Marcus Brimage. We're hanging out here at the Ground and Pond restaurant that just opened up in Boynton Beach. Yep. Marcus, you know, every time you have the same interviews, you know, how was your fight? And mm -hmm. how, let's do something different today, man. Okay. You know, let's take a little bit about yourself because you're a big comic book nerd if you want me to say yes big I, I follower can, I, can concur. I can concur with that yes I I, agree. you're a big fan of what specific uh, comic book i know you've seen a lot of green horn i think one time you wore something about green hornet last no, time you're fighting green lantern yeah. green lantern yeah, i'm sorry i'm saying green land you know um i'm a big uh spider-man is my number one guy you know spider-man anything related to spider-man in the spider-man universe peter parker miles morales uh the scarlet uh excuse me yeah the scarlet spider now um, the Venom, I read the issues of Venom. I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so that's my main guy. And, you know, Hulk is a close number two, but no cigars. All about Spider-Man. So what did you think of the last Spider-Man, and what do you think of the new one with Jamie Foxx being uh, playing, what, Electro? Well, um, the last Amazing Spider-Man, it kind of... It kinda, irked me a little bit because they didn't follow the specific diagrams of Spider-Man, okay? Now, Peter Parker, he's a complex individual, okay? See, he became Spider-Man out of his guilt because he caught the guy who killed his uncle and it happened to be the guy who he let go. And the amazing Spider-Man, he never caught the guy. Nobody, nobody realizes. Really? It. Yes, I didn't know that. Yes, that's that's what that so was. Well, the, the bad guy gets away. The one he, who killed. He him. just he just got away. And he never find him. He never finds him. And that that was the pivotal point of Peter Parker becoming Fire uh, Spider Man full flesh. You know, it's a sense of guilt that he carried around his whole entire life, never to let that happen again. Oh, look at that, See? giving you information that we didn't. I mean, I personally didn't know about Spider Man. Yeah. That's really neat. Now. In your last fight, you came out with, with a gambit thing. What, what did you come up with? You came oh, up with something. Well, uh, that's my that's my uh, power level scatter for uh, from Dragon Ball Z. Um, Dra uh, Dragon Ball Z and Quentin Rampage Jackson are the reasons I got into MMA. Everybody knows that about uh, Quentin Jackson, so I'm just trying to pay my respects to Dragon Ball Z and you know saying thank you. I already said thank you to Quentin Jackson, so that's just me saying thank you to Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> So what's going on with you, Marcus? You were overseas, and, and I got to call something out because I remember reading a tweet or something uh, over, we were in Sweden, right? It was in Sweden where you yeah. were at? And I think it was around 10 o'clock, and, and you showed an image of uh, some adult content you saw on TV. What, dude, what happened out there? Dude, it was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon when I saw this. It, it, was, twin, it was 10 where y'all was at, but it was like 4 o'clock in the afternoon when I was at. And I was, you know, I was flipping through a channel so I could stay in my hotel room because, you know, during fights, I don't like to be out there. I like to, like, stay and focus on my fight. So I just flipping the channel. I just saw, like, two girls going there. And I was like, dude, it's 4 o'clock. What's this, you know? It's like HBO don't even do it like that. So I was like, man, I had to take pictures of it and show everybody, like, yo, Sweden, it's nice. The teeth, man, I mean, come on. You don't have to wait to read through, read through diaries like at no, midnight, no, anytime at no all. No Emmanuel stories, no um, real sex, yeah. none of that. It's just right there. <laughs> so what's up with you, Marcus? How's this training going on? When are we going to see you in action again? Uh, training's going well, uh, supposedly in August, but uh, I'm switching up because I am uh, dropping down to 135. And it sucks because, you know, I got to weigh my food now. I got to have four ounces, uh, no carbs at all. Everything's meat, vegetables, a whole bunch of fruit to uh, keep my energy up. So it sucks, but, you know, I'm going to be a different chocolate dunce. I'm going to be so sexy, boy, y'all just wait. So are you going to be more comfortable in this, in this weight class, you think, or are you just going to give it a shot? Uh, yes, because uh, I was told that, I was the shortest 145er in the UFC roster. And to be honest with you, people don't understand that when you're short, you just used to being short. So I always had to fight people taller than me. It's just what I had to do. I'm just used to that. But I don't have to, I could switch, I don't have to stay in that weight class. I could go, I could switch it up to where people are around my height. I'm 5'4, so you know, every time I fight, somebody's like 5'9, 5'10. So, I don't have to struggle to fight tall people like throwing my jabs up here and stuff like that. So now I'm not even the tallest 135. I'm in the mix. So I think it'll be a better move for me. But getting there is going to be a pain, though. Marcus, I want to wish you good luck in that 135. I'm sure you do well. Marcus, and you know, him and I were working on something and I'm speaking. Teach him a little bit of Spanish. Uh, have you been Sunday. polishing it up? Have you been polishing it up? Next Sunday at 3, I got the Google Translate app. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> That's what I'm doing with Portuguese. That's it's it. dark. It's hard. I thought it was like the same thing. I was like, you know, well, it is, but you have to practice every day at least about an hour to get see? your brain working. See, now, how are we going to do this? Now, you say practice every day about an hour. We're only meeting up once a week. How, how's that going? That's up to you, man. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, you went to school. You know, you went to school for one hour. Then after that, it's up to you. You got to do your homework, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. That's exactly. Now, have you learned a little bit? I mean, have you done a little with this Google app that you have? You, you know a little Spanish? What can yeah. you say? Well, uh, nah, nah, really not much. I, that's why I take uh, somebody like tweets me like either in Portuguese or Spanish. I like highlight and I copy the whole content. And then I paste it in Google Translate, and then I like read like the interviews and stuff. So that's on the way. But um, I'm in South Florida now, so I need to diversify my buns, and I need to learn a second language. Which and, it, and it helps your brain. It keeps yeah. it, it. It reduces. It prevents from you to getting Alzheimer's when you get older. It reduces the chances of getting Alzheimer's. Learning Spanish. Just making that stuff. No, no, oh, any language, any particular <laughs> language. I'm not talking just particularly oh, Spanish. No, 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 Spanish. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. It's like a PSA. Yeah. You learn another language, you keep reading, you know, it prevents the chances of you getting Alzheimer's. Not, that doesn't eliminate it, mm -hmm. but it reduces the chances of getting Alzheimer's. Okay. Well, you know, I just think, I just think that I should learn the language because, you know, Spanish women are very sexy, and if I talk to them, they say something back. I'm trying to know if they're trying to diss me or they want me to go in. So, Well, I'm going to challenge you. Check this out. And I'm doing it right here on YouTube, and I want everyone to keep note because this right here is, is May. About two, three months from now, once you start learning your Spanish, all right, we're going to do something. We're going to have some fun. Okay. We're going to go to some Spanish restaurants or clubs, and you're going to try to pick up a chick using your Spanish about it. I'm down. I'm gang. Let's do it. Okay, yeah. All right, there you got it. We're going to challenge Marcus. He's going to see if he can use what he has learned with me, see if he can pick up a chick. And if you do, then that's good, man. It worked. Good. Yeah, right. it worked. And I'll be the new Mr. International, you know. <laughs> Since Sean the Carl retired, somebody got to hold the title Mr. International. <laughs> I'll pick it up. Marcus, we'll do it. Thanks very much, Frank. Always a pleasure. Thank you.